when you create a new file in Photoshop, let's go up here to File New, you can set the original image size and resolution right here. Set your width and your height and your resolution. And of course you can set your measurements over here on the right hand side as well. Just like that. And you can choose English or metric, American or metric scale here for your resolution. So you can set the resolution and image size right there. Now after you have a file created you also can change that image size and resolution and also change your canvas size. And you do all of that up on the image menu. I'm going to open up a different file here though. Let's just open up one of our basic images. There we go. And come up to image and image size. We'll look at this one first. And here we can change the image size. Notice on the right hand side this little lock over here and right down here this little lock. This means if I change the width, the height will change proportionally. If I change them down here again, those will also change proportionally. Now this lock is placed in here by this option right there, Constrain Proportions. So uncheck that, the locks go away. Check that again and the locks come back in again. In most cases you'll want to have those locked. Let's say I wanted to make this image larger. I'll make it 700 wide. Notice how the height changes and the document size changes as well, but the resolution stayed the same. Now, when you do this, when you do this kind of a change on your size and you leave the resolution alone, what happens is the resolution gets spread across a larger area, so you actually lose a bit of resolution quality. In other words, going at 500 pixels wide at 72 pixels per inch and taking that up to 700 pixels wide at 72 pixels per inch. The computer, Photoshop, has to go in and fill in those extra mix, missing pixels. Obviously we haven't added in new pixels to our image, but we're keeping the resolution the same, therefore we have to fill in those missing pixels. Now Photoshop is very good about doing this. What you tend to see is that the image will soften up a little bit in most cases. You can control how that resampling is done right down here, the little drop down list. And there are a few options. The bicubic is the best to use in most cases, but you may want to choose different options. Know what this is? These refer to how the pixels are duplicated. Photoshop looks at each pixel, and if it needs to put in one next to that, it chooses how to find the pixel for that. Bicubic will be looking at the pixels around each pixel and then using that to average to gain the next pixel to place over. So let's say I had a white and a black pixel side by side. Photoshop will look at those two and say, okay, a medium gray in between those two would be about the right thing to have. So that's what it does in here. Nearest neighbor is better for preserving hard edges. So if you have hard edges in your image, you can go ahead and try this one. Bicubic smoother, best for enlargement. Bicubic sharper, best for reduction. So it depends on what it is that you're doing when you're resampling. If you're just doing a small change like I'm doing right here, just leave it at the best for smooth gradients. That should be just fine. If you're doing a major change, making it a lot smaller or a lot larger, you may want to choose one of these options right down below here. Now you always can go ahead and do it, see how it looks, then hit the edit and undo button and go back and do it again if it isn't quite what you want to have done. Let's put this back to the 500 that we had. So we can change the dimensions in here, the image size right there, or we can change the document size that can actually can increase or add in additional pixels just like that. Notice how if I make the resolution larger, the width and height of the document, this is the printed size, stays the same, but the pixel dimensions increases because of course we now have more pixels per inch so you'll have more showing up here. Now if you're just increasing the resolution like this and the image size stays the same it's going to look pretty much the same. There'll just be a finer division. Of course this will still apply. There will still be resampling of the image that will be applied to that image but it'll remain basically the same if you're keeping the image size the same. Now if you need to do both of these, change your resolution and change your image size, my recommendation is, if this is just from my experience, what seems to work better is to change the resolution first 
and then reset the image size second. It just seems to work out best. So I always change resolution first and then readjust the image size. It seems to hold a little better quality doing it that way. Even if you're doing it before you just click OK, it still seems to work out better that direction. Now one reason why you might want to increase the resolution, let's say I'm working with an image which is a 72, which is a screen level or screen quality image, and I want to use it in a print document. The print document should be at 300 pixels per inch. So I need the higher pixel dimension, and it may soften the image up a little bit for printing. It may not be a problem. It may not be that noticeable for you. But if you're going to be going in and doing any additional work onto the image, doing any filter work, any modifying, any adjustments, anything at all, you should reset your resolution first. That way, any of those changes to the image will be done at the higher resolution, and you'll retain a lot more image quality. So that's changing the image size in here. And when you do that, the whole image changes. It just increases in size, decreases in size, changes in resolution, whatever it is, the whole thing is done that way. Let's say what you want is to have a larger working area, but you want to keep the image the same size as it is, the same dimensions as it is. You do that by changing the canvas size. Go up here to Image and Canvas Size. Right here, there's the width and the height. Let's say I wanted to add in the inch around my image here. Maybe I want to put in or create a, a picture frame or something. I want to have space around this. So I'll leave these the same. I'll choose the center point here. This is where the new canvas will be added into it. The new canvas will be added around, as you can see in here. If I put this upper left-hand corner, the new canvas will be added to the right and to the bottom, and the image will be up in the left-hand corner. In most cases, the center will be the correct option for you. You can choose the extension color in here. This is what is going to be added in. Background color, foreground color, or you can choose white, black, or gray. Or click on this and choose any color you want to. It brings up the color picker. So let's say I want to add an inch around here. That means I need two inches increased width and two inches increased height. That's an inch above, inch below, inch left, inch right. So I'll just go in here and I'll change my numbers. Let's make this eight and let's make this seven, just like that. Choose OK and I'll zoom out just a bit here. Hold the Alt key, click out. And there you go. The image stayed the same and I simply increased the size of the canvas that the image is sitting on. So those are two different options in here, image size and canvas size for changing your image. And also, of course, image size has two basic uses, one changing the resolution, and the other one is changing the width and height of the image in here.